It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. It's Thursday evening, March the 2nd, 2017. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. We've got crude, S&P, gold, euro, and FDAX this evening. Crude is bearish, but after seeing a perfect example of what we've been talking about all week on this newsletter, we know the bears have some waiting to do before they sell more tomorrow. The S&P is bearish. Yes, I said bearish, but we have three levels of support telling us the sellers will be a lot more excited about selling this market up at the reversal line sitting overhead. Gold is bearish and trying to finish off a move down to last week's low, but a key support level is standing in the way, so we have two options we're considering for tomorrow. The euro is bearish, but we have two major support levels of support telling us the most reliable selling opportunities will come up at resistance levels waiting overhead tomorrow. And the FDAX is bullish, but after a short-term trading range, this tells us to use the two-try rule for the most reliable buying opportunities in Friday's session. Boy, oh boy, we're ready to wrap up another incredible week of trading. We've had a great week here on this newsletter, an incredible week in our trade room, and I have another great newsletter in store for you guys and gals tonight. we got plenty of reliable trading opportunities setting up for Friday's session. Before we jump into the video, though, tonight, I do want to make sure to remind you, the only place to watch the full-length version of this video is on our blog at sidewaysmarkets.com. If you're watching this video right now on our YouTube channel, not to worry. There's a link in the description of that YouTube video. Follow that link and come here to the blog at Sideways Markets for the full-length newsletter. While you're here, don't forget, join the mailing list. I'll send you an email every evening when this newsletter video is ready to watch. Right below, the, right below the newsletter sign up in the lower left hand corner you'll see a spot there to follow me on social media follow me on my many social media channels I'm always posting important links and charts and updates throughout the day below the video tonight you can download all the charts you see me using in tonight's video I know we had a bit of a technology problem in last night's newsletter hopefully they've got that fixed here for tonight I apologize about that last night but tonight though Expect that website to be working uh, like it always does here. I'll upload those charts. You can download those charts and have them ready on your computer tomorrow. Please don't forget, in the upper right-hand corner, grab your free pass. If you're not a member here at School of Trade, if you're not an advanced member here at School of Trade, make sure you grab that free pass. You're going to learn more with me in 90 minutes than you will anywhere else on the interwebs. Grab that free pass in the upper right-hand corner. And please don't forget, if you're brand new here to the SOT community, I would love to give you the who, what, where, when, and why. Get a great frequently ask questions page on the right hand side of the website and I'm always here standing by to help you guys out 24 7 if you have any questions along the way I'm gonna be here working with some new clients this weekend here in Los Angeles I will be available via email and live support if you guys have any questions right I do really enjoy this job that I have here teaching new traders I look forward to working with you as well tomorrow's Friday March the 3rd let's take a look at the schedule for tomorrow before we jump into that Friday session though we get some news coming out of China tonight just before before 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Anytime we hear from China, we always know the overnight Asian session. Be on alert. We may see some moving and shaking markets here in the overnight session. And then pretty much tomorrow, everything's really weighted tomorrow, really, really early. You've got 350, 4 o'clock, 430, 5 a.m. Everything's pretty much weighted tomorrow morning inside of that London session starting at 350 going all the way to 430. We really don't have anything to really worry about tomorrow. We get ISM tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time, right? Not a lot to worry about there. We got Yellen speaking at one o'clock. I'm not expecting that to be too big of a market moving event. She's not testifying tomorrow. It's just a speech somewhere around Chicago. I can't recall where exactly it is, but she will be on the microphone tomorrow afternoon. I'm not going to expect much, though, tomorrow, late in the day here tomorrow. So be aware, tomorrow's a Friday, which always means early in, early out. Get to those trades early, wrap up that, wrap up those trades early, and enjoy your weekend. Hopefully, hopefully the weather's starting to turn there. We are finally expecting a sunny, warm weekend here in Los Angeles. Hope you guys have a warm and dry weekend ahead of you as well. Don't forget, we'll be in our trade room tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time, and we'll be executing the plan with all of our advanced members. I hope you'll come out and join me. Now, with that said, we got a lot of work to do tonight. Let's jump right in here. And you guys are busy people. I don't want to waste any more of your time here. Crude is bearish, but we clearly see that sellers aren't committing to sell at these lows, telling us that our best 
best option is to wait for the move back up to resistance levels or wait for a successful breakout pullback to new lows tomorrow. Just as we expected today, a strong move lower to start the session led to sellers taking profit, a big correction back up, and a move back down to retest the low. Now that we're back to the lows, now we wait for more information. Sellers will be looking for breaks up above 52.88, up above 53.14 to sell high, or if prices collapse lower, we'll gladly follow lower down to that range expansion and that measured move, but we need to see a successful breakout pullback right before we go trying to sell this thing down tomorrow. As you can see here, this is an example tonight of what we've been talking about here in this newsletter all week long. Strong move in one direction, don't chase after it, wait for the market to come up, and sell it back down to retest those lows. Now here we are, done with those lows, time out, and wait and see what happens next. We're now looking for one of two scenarios. First of all, either a break up so we can sell this sucker back down again. That will allow the sellers to sell high in a bear market. Or we want to look for confirmation that we're looking for more. What else are we looking for? Probably a measured move down around that 52.12 area. To get there, we want to see a strong breakout pullback, get that moving average below that quadruple down at 52.60, right, and try to hold this market going lower. Now, digging in a little more specifically here into this, I've got my eyes on 52.88 and 5314. Real difficult to tell which level we're going to use right now, but that will allow us now to go up, buyer failure, and back down. Sell high. Go up, buyer failure, and back down. Sell high. Now, there may be some variations of that, but the overall idea is, is get this market up off these lows so we can, excuse me, so we can sell this market back down. With that said, the real challenge comes as we push lower. We always talk about whenever we're dealing with a trading range, and that's pretty much what this is. We don't have, we don't quite have a confirmed double bottom yet, but again, with that move down, back up, we have to assume this is major support, right? We have to assume the sellers, they're fat and happy. They get the big run down. They get a chance to take their profit and sell it again, right? We were right in tune with that today uh, in our trade room, weren't we? So now that we're back down to those lows now, now we want to see that breakdown. We're looking for what I call that fake out, breakout, pullback. Remember this earlier this week? We've talked about all this stuff earlier this week. If you missed the lessons earlier this week, make sure you go back and watch those newsletter videos over the weekend. You get some homework to do. Don't forget, the first time we try to break down, look what happens. Right, The minute it pokes its head out below that low, look what happens. Bam, goes right back up. Bears take their profit. Buyers try, right? Buyers try to buy into it. Buyers here trying to call a reversal. So the bottom line is most breakouts fail, right? We talk about that quite a bit on this newsletter. Most breakouts fail. So because this will require a breakdown, and we know that a lot of breakouts fail and end up going back into the range, I like to play this against them. We call it the okie doke. Call it the fake out, breakout, pullback. Wait for the breakout, and of course, you're looking for the breakout pullback. But drill down a little bit closer, and what we'll look for is is a move for the breakout pullback that can trap high. That's usually going to be where you're going to get the most reliable type of breakout opportunity. Again, be very, very suspicious of all breakouts because most breakouts fail, right? You're selling low. So wait for some strength. Get that moving average to clear outside the range. Look for that little trap high and the move down to that measured move from there. If, in fact, we do end up tumbling lower here tomorrow, just watch out. You've got that range expansion. Take that trading range, copy and paste it down. I'm going to call that the no trade zone there, starting at 5220. So if we do end up rolling over here, right, don't forget, find, right, find a short-term trading range and just look for opportunities, right, to sell high, right? Whatever you do, just don't chase that market as it goes lower. Beautiful example here of what we're talking about all week. What would it take for this market to turn bullish? A very strong move up, and they'd have to hold a pullback, right? So imagine now for a moment, real strong, right? Again, real, real strong. Got to be a real strong move up, 
And then that's not enough because as it goes higher, sellers are going to be selling into this move as it goes higher, right? As it goes higher, they have to hold that pullback. And if they can hold that pullback and make a new higher high on strength, that will give us at least the confirmation we need that in the short term, right, the buyers are definitely taking control. Now, keep an eye on this prior week low. Keep an eye on these prior week levels. Write this down if you're a new trader. At the end of the week, we oftentimes see the prior week open, the prior week high, the prior week low, and the prior week close levels become price magnets. So if the bulls do take control, don't be surprised if we end up up and struggling to get away right from that prior week low. Again, it will take a lot of strength here for those buyers to deter these sellers because it looks like the gig is up right now and this market looks very, very heavy. With that said, moving on to the S&P. S&P is bearish and trading at the triple down, the low of the channel, and just a few points above that darn measured move. The big challenge right now is the lack of open space below us before we reach the measured move. The bears have control, but they will be a lot more excited to sell this market when they have a decent target available. You know the age-old story, right? How do you find a winning trade in a bear market? Find an area of resistance where there's a lot of open space for a big target. So we're looking at the high of that channel and the battle zone overhead, right, for areas of resistance, that will give them enough room for a nice big target down. The target right now is that measured move, but keep an eye on that prior month high at 72 and three quarters, right, for the runner in tomorrow late morning in the session. With that said, another great example here of a strong move down, price corrects up and runs back to the low. Now, really good example here, look what happens when it goes back to the low. It shows us proof that it wants to go lower, right? We've talked about this, we just, we just saw an example, right? Crude oil is our, here in this process, right? In this kind of cycle here, crude oil is sitting right there. Right? It hasn't quite given us proof that it wants to go lower. Does that make sense? Right? So crude has to push through it. The S&P did push through it. And of course, now that's creating this larger channel. Right, We're sitting down at the low of that channel. It's giving us a larger measured move. That measured move, of course, is waiting just a few points below. Right, And always a very important, you can tell this was their objective today, Right, that triple down double down, triple down. You can tell that triple down was really their objective today because they really kind of got hung up right on that triple down. So whenever we can identify where the market's objective was, in this case, it was a triple down because you can just see they really tried and they couldn't get through it. Knowing what the market objective is now, if this market pops back up, I'm watching this reversal line here, 83 and a quarter. I'm watching the battle zone overhead, 86 and a quarter, right? Price goes up buyer failure and back down price goes up buyer failure and back down these are the sweet spots here right now in all reality you could call this entire area here one big sell zone for the bears the battle zone of course being an area where the buyers and sellers will change hands there right that's why i call it the battle zone because that's where the bulls and the bears right that's where that's where they throw down and go to battle there because that's usually where the market will will go up Again, right, shallow, shallow pullback here up to 83 and a quarter, deeper pullback up in the battle zone, right, for the move back down from there. If they can hold and stay, then obviously those bears are going to give up on this. So most important thing right now is try to get it up so we can sell it back down. But what happens if it just tumbles lower? You know, we got some news out of China tonight. What happens if this news drags this price down? This is a really, really common scenario. Whenever we find ourselves at a measured move, we saw plenty of examples of this today on crude oil, right? Whenever we find ourselves at a measured move, look for, look for traps. Find that little short-term range. This goes for any real major support, really. Look for some traps right above those highs and just keep on selling that thing back down. The only scenario where you wouldn't keep selling it back down is if the market was able to break out strong, hold the pullback, right, and go, just like we talked about on crude oil. In a bear market, we keep selling as long as those buyers don't take control and we have enough room, right, for a nice, decent target. So if the price, again, up, back down, up, back down, if it goes lower, though, now careful, careful, find that trading range 
wait for it to go above that range, right, and then scalp that sucker back down. If you do get that little scalp on the way back down, try to hold a runner, that prior month high at 72 and three quarters is definitely going to be a juicy target for the Bears. I almost took a, took a double take on this chart tonight because, yes, it is bearish right now. It's very difficult to make any case right now to be a buyer. I do understand.